Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for another video blog. So, I'm going to talk about low back pain today. And even though it's not something that I specialize on anymore, I work with a lot of people back in the days when I was a full-time personal trainer. I helped a lot of people to heal from low back injuries and low back pain. And the reason I'm sharing a personal story here with you about my own struggles with back pain in my late 20s and through my 30s is because a long time ago, I made a video about the connection of low back pain and digestive stress, digestive problems. And that video has become very popular. To these days, I get questions about low back injuries, low back pain, and uh, and uh, gas gastrointestinal issues. So I want to thank you for if you were one of those viewers who sent me questions, who made comments about the video. I really appreciate it. And it's because of you that I'm sharing my personal story, not just a personal story of struggle, but how at 47 today I am completely pain free. Even though if I showed you my MRI result here, it will show you that I have a pathology in my low back. I have a typical a uh, bulge disc in the L4, L5, L5, and S1. And that's what the most injuries of the low back are because that section of our lumbar spine is where a lot of forces get transferred through our uh, day, through you know doing sports, or just getting out of your car. That air of our back, if not mobile enough, not strong enough, not functional enough, um, we can create a lot of compression and wear and tear in that area and have an injury. So that injury, that those bulge discs could never be cured. But I am absolutely uh, a big believer that you don't need to live with pain. And I'm going to share some of my secrets here. So first I want to share my struggle, which my low back pain started to come when I was in my late 20s. And um, it was do a lot of heavy lifting. Like I was lifting a lot of weights like a, a bodybuilder. I would go to the gym and do heavy, um, you know, back squats, heavy leg press, deadlifts. And back on those days in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, as a trainer, we didn't have access to all this core training, all this scientific core and back training that we have today. We didn't even talk about core. Those days, Core exercise will simply lay on the floor and do a thousand crunches, which I don't recommend at all. So I was doing a lot of improper uh, exercises for my body. And I say that because I'm not here to say there's a wrong exercise, but my you, what there is is a wrong exercise maybe for your body. Because I don't have a lot of flexibility on my low back. If you saw my low back, it's pretty flat and not very mobile. I was creating a lot of shearing forces there and that caused my injury. So I had major back spasm that I could barely move. I had to lay down for days. Uh, then that pain transferred to my sciatica nerve. If you had sciatica nerve, it's an awful pain on your leg, kind of the hamstrings area, travels all the way to your calf and go all the way to your toes. I never thought, I never thought a, a leg could hurt so much. So I've been there. If you are in pain, I know what it feels like. I've been there. I went from you know pain levels of 10 to 0. And I want to share some of these insights with you because it could help you out. So first, let's do a little review here on what the causes of low back pain can be. And a lot of people think it's usually an orthopedic problem, muscle problem, or bone problem. And there's way more. Our body is a holistic system. Our body functions as a whole. So I want to share in this quadrant here all the variables, all the possible causes of low back pain. It's usually not just one. So let's talk about the typical uh, reason, muscle skeleton issues. So if you have an injury, poor core function, you might be able to do a lot of crunch, but that doesn't mean you have core function. So to know if your core muscles are functioning properly, meaning recruiting at the right time, in muscles firing in the right sequence. Find a check practitioner, C-H-E-K. Find a check practitioner in your area to access your core. I'm a check practitioner. If you're in this area, you can talk to me. If you are in any other area, anywhere in the world, um, you can probably find a check practitioner. 
So muscle imbalances, overtraining, poor form exercises, um, overusing like sports like running and cycling, you tend to overuse and underuse certain muscles, so that creates balance. Accidents, trauma, etc. So first place to check is it's with your doctor by doing an MRI. You can go to a chiropractor to check your, your, your bone alignment through an x-ray and see what, what muscle skeletal issue you might have. The second component of back pain, and this is one that is very underlooked, it's diet and lifestyle, so particularly diet. So if you have a diet high in carbohydrates and sugar, it means you have higher levels of inflammation. The way to check inflammation levels is through a blood test when you have a physical and check your CRP levels to see your inflammation markers. But gut issues and food sensitivities. A lot of people have food sensitivities which cause a, sw a swelling of your intestinal wall or your gut in general. And if you think about it, your gut shares the same area of your lumbar spine. So they share the same area, L4, L5, same nerves sharing the area. And uh, you can have what we call re uh, reflexive pain, uh, which means if you have a swelling on the, on the gut for food sensitivity, it's going to be affecting those nerves that also feed your low back muscles. So you can have what we call visceral reflection. So for me, I will share uh, after, you know, here you know I was training improperly, lifting heavy weights, not stretching or anything. Here I found out I had a sensitivity with gluten. I had too much inflammation in my gut, so it was causing pain. Uh, pain. So. After I address muscle skeleton issues, I cut gluten. I'll share more of the solutions in the next page. But you want to check intestinal and uh, digestive problems. Symptoms of um, gut and digestive problems are over um, feeling bloated most of the time after meals, uh, pain in the stomach, excessive gas, belching, or any type of discomfort around your stomach and your belly. That's a, a sign of... of um, stress in your digestive system, or simply overeating, eating too much carbohydrates and sugar, um, issues with constipation, diarrhea, etc. So if you suspect you have any issue in your digestive system, I highly encourage you to address the problem. You can address the problem with very skilled nutritionists, uh, holistic lifestyle coaches um, like myself, health coaches, naturopaths, even some chiro uh, chiropractors do that kind of work. Number three in this quadrant, stress, and I put the word fear here because usually, you know, I talk about good stress and bad stress all the time. Positive stress that, that, that we thrive on, that pushes us to be successful, and then there's the tox toxic stress that comes from being chronically stressed, chronically worried, overwhelmed, uh, preoccupied, uh, uh, filled with anxiety, that's not a good stress. And usually that stress is always coming from some type of fear. So if you have any type of emotional, physical, mental, chemical stress, chemical stress is by poor diet or being exposed to, uh, to chemicals and in your work environment, or even the cleaning supplies you use in your, in your home, if you have sensitivity to chemicals, could be affecting your gut health and therefore affect your low back. So you can see there are a lot of variables. So any type of stress, the body doesn't know the difference between emotional and physical stress. Stress is going to release this, this flood of hormones in your body that can contribute to uh, gut issues and affect your low back. Also, stress adds tension to the muscle. Think when you have anxiety or if you stressed out, your muscles get tense. So you actually are um, preventing the flow of blood, oxygen, and nutrients to the muscle tissues. And there are a lot of muscles in our bodies that don't get a lot of blood supply. So if they don't have a lot of blood supply, and on top of that, the tissue is dehydrated, is undernourished, it's a recipe for pain, for dryness at the fascia, the muscle tissue. And I start to talk a little bit about the chakra system here. If you're familiar with the chakra system, there are the seven energy systems in our bodies. You know we're made of a lot of energy. Energy affects us. If you are around somebody that you have an issue with or somebody that's negative or toxic, you feel that in your body. And you feel because of the energy. So anytime you have a 
a boost of stress, for example, of worry, you can literally feel the contraction of certain areas of your body. It can be the neck, can be the chest, can be the stomach. I do this test with my clients all the time and I teach them exactly how to address where the stress is sitting on their body. And that starts to block energy in your body. If you want to learn more about the chakra system, if you're curious, the most excellent book is The Easter Body and Western Mind. It's kind of the Bible. You see all the markers here and it teaches you the relationship between the chakras and your, your health, your energy. So Usually, when we have, for example, a lot of emotional stress in our life, emotional stress tends to sit in our belly area. What is in the belly? Your gut, and behind that, your lumbar spine. So one of the, 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 the secrets of my life being pain-free now is that I address all my stress, especially emotional stress. And number four here, breath, energy. So breathing brings you life force brings you more energy and most people have what we call reverse breathing pattern. Reverse breathing pattern would be if I ask you to take a deep breath, if your first action is to raise your chest and your neck, I mean your shoulders towards your neck and suck your belly in, you have a reverse breathing pattern. A proper breathing pattern is like your dog breathes or a baby breathes, the belly expands. So 70% of that breath the inhale, inhalation is going to your belly and 30% is going here. So if you have a reverse breathing technique, you're creating muscle dysfunction. You're affecting the ability of your diaphragm to work properly, which is a biological pump in the body. Your diaphragm, your abdominals, your pelvic floor are muscles that help to send a lot of nutrition up and down to your body. So if you have in reversed or improper breathing pattern, you also not getting a lot of oxygen in that area of your, of your body, your belly, which is doing your digestion, and your lumbar spine. So if there's not a lot of oxygen going there, there's not a lot of life force feeding those cells, those muscle tissues. So that can be a huge contributor to low back pain. That's why in times of stress, your pain might get amplified. When we are in, 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 in times of high stress, the weak link in our bodies always going to suffer. For some people it might be migraines, for some people it might be low back pain. And uh, you start feeling like I talk here, energy stuck in your body. Like I would literally go to my naturopath acupuncturist when I was in a lot of pain and say, I have all this pain, it feels like this energy blocked that nothing could dissipate that pain except acupuncture, which was one of the, the secrets that fixed my back. So now that I share with you all the variables of back pain here, I want to share with you what I have been doing over the years that made me live completely pain-free. Now, I'm not saying this is what you should do. This is what works for me. But I'll highly encourage you for you if you are a victim of back pain. Think about all those um, variables that I share in that quad, quad, quadrant with you. Muscle skeleton, what exercise program you have, how you move in your body, work with a trainer or professional to help you, check your diet, your stress levels, and also how you're breathing. And again, all those things can be addressed by a Czech practitioner in your area. And if you have questions about that, just shoot me a message in my YouTube channel. So this is what I have done. So as a Czech practitioner, we practice something called the, the four doctors format. Diet, movement, quiet or recovery, and happiness. So by using this quadrant, I'm able to learn or to apply all my essential needs or meet my essential needs every single day so I'm healthy and I have high levels of energy every day. And, and this is kind of the format I use with all my clients. So this is what I do to live a, a pain-free life. So my diet, I cut gluten, I eat 95% paleo, and I say 95% because being from Brazil, I love my rice and sometimes a good organic corn as well. I get all my greens, my veggies organically, so I get them from uh, um, the farmer's market or I try to buy, you know, whatever is fresh, local in, my, in, in, my, in the grocery store. My meats are only grass-fed, or if there's no grass-fed option, at least organic or pasture-raised. I absolutely don't eat commercial factory-based meats. That can lead up to a lot of uh, 
toxic and inflammation in your body. And hydration is very important. Every time my client comes here and he, he or she complains of pain, first question is, are you hydrating? So filter water, very, very important. For movement, I do functional training. Basically, everything I do is either unilateral or I make sure I'm doing a lot of exercise on a, on a transversal uh, plan because everything we do basically involves rotation. Even when you just run, you're stepping in a rock or something, you, our bodies or joints are constantly moving in, in rotation or in a transverse plan. So make sure in your training, even if you like to do your traditional chest press or your pull-ups, I like those exercises too. I make, make sure you incorporate a lot of transverse plane exercise. And again, if you don't know how to do those exercises, work with a trainer a few times and learn how to move properly. A lot of mobility stability work, which means making sure that the joints are moving properly. If your hips get tight, that can affect your low back. So mobility stability is about working the, the joint. Make sure that joint can move freely. Not too much movement, but not strict movement either. I do a lot of mountain bikes, so I spend time outdoors. I do some Qigong for my uh, movement days or sometimes my recovery days. Kundalini yoga has really helped me to get rid of residue back pain. I used to have this like little, little nagging tightness on the right side of my back. And Kundalini yoga is uh, about a lot of breath work. So by doing a lot of breathing work for like an hour, I was able to eliminate the rest of the pain. And also to Kundalini yoga helped me to deal with some emotional issues. So I became uh, more emotionally and mentally stable. And it's funny because the word stability, we can transfer to our joints. Usually if you have a low back issue, it means you have what we call segmental instability. So when you feel stable in your life, your low back gets better. There's a relationship there. And I practice walk meditation. I walk every morning where I simply go into a meditative, meditative state, gratitude, or sometimes I use my walk for some critical thinking as well, but that's part of my movement. So walk meditation can be either part of your movement, part of your happiness, or part of your quiet recovery. For quiet recovery, I make sure I sleep eight hours. It's crucial. We heal our bodies, heal and repair when we sleep. So if you're doing a lot of things, like you, you're moving a lot, you have, you know, a good amount of stress, which is healthy to have a good amount of stress in your life, and you're not recovering well, that can hurt your, your body, especially low back if you have an issue there. So we heal and repair when we sleep, physical repair and psychological repair. Reading time, acupuncture massage, acupuncture really helped me to eliminate back pain. I work with an excellent naturopath here in Boulder that helped me tons. And I make sure I have a massage once a month. I have time uh, to play with friends. And through meditation and breath, breath work, every morning I meditate and, do, and I do breathing, um, breath work for about 20 minutes. So that's my quiet and recovery formula. And for happiness, this is how we handle stress better. We need to have time to do things that we love, things that we have fun doing. So for me, it's again, time with friends, playing time with my pets. I have a dog and a cat that I absolutely adore. Learning is very stimulating. I need to be learning and growing in order to be happy. So these are my habits of happiness. Time in nature. So I get that either my, through my walks, hiking, or my time mountain biking. And great food and wine. I'm a big fan of gourmet food and French and Italian wines. So that gives me a lot of pre uh, pleasure and fulfillment. So this is what I do every single day to live a pain-free life. So this is a lifestyle. This is not a 30-day formula. This is not a 60-day formula. And I want to share this personal story with you because I see a lot of people out there giving up, selling down for having a life that is destined to be always in pain. And I refuse to accept that. So if you are one of those people with live with a little pain or a lot of pain, consider looking at that quadrant. And if you have any questions about things I discussed here today, I'm sure I'm going to see a comment from you. Um, and I would love to engage with you and answer questions the best um, way I can. And I'm offering 30% uh, off. If you want to learn about this stuff and you want to have um, two, three, uh, consultations with me over the phone, over Skype. I can 
talk to you if you're in Japan, if you're in Europe, from anywhere, Brazil, we can Skype and I will give you 30% off my consultations if you're coming to me because of this video. If you're addressing low back issues, you have an automatic 30% off my rate. And again, I can coach people um, that live anywhere in the world because we have this amazing technology now. So I hope this video helped you and gave you, if you're in pain, gave you some hope. And if you're not in pain, you know somebody who's living a lot of back pain. And even if it's not low back pain, it might be an upper back pain, it might be a shoulder pain, neck pain, this will translate to any kind of physical pain. Um, and uh, yes, please help me to share this knowledge and the love. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you very soon.